Hey, welcome back. We're going to do module 7 today, and there's only one section, 7-1. Alright, as I said, we're only doing 7-1 today, um, but in module 7, that's the only section we're doing. So, this stuff looks kind of complicated, but guess what? It's actually pretty easy. Here is the spreadsheet. Now, I've included this data in uh, a spreadsheet on WebAssign in the resources section so you can just pull it. It's the same data that's in your workbook for, for module 7, 7-1. Uh, so go ahead and open that up and uh, follow along here if you can. So let's walk through that four step process. Uh, the workbook shows, literally shows you step one, step one first, and then uh, H underscore, this is gonna be our H naught. And we'll say the mean or mu of A is equal to the mu of, whoa, can't type all of a sudden. Mu of B equals mu of C. And we'll talk about what this means here in a second. Um, whoa, got some formatting issues. All right, we're going to just copy that down and change everything in here. So let's make that little a. So the alternative hypothesis is that at least two of these differ. All right, with that step one, let's go back to the problem and talk about it. A researcher conducts a one-way ANOVA to compare the means of four groups, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Del data are scores for trainees. Here's the data, um, who had four different types of job training. So Alpha was a type of job training, Bravo was another type, and Charlie was another, and Delta was another. And so what the researchers probably want to know here is does Alpha or Bravo or Charlie, are any of these um, different uh, for their means for these scores, all right? Um, and maybe they want to know is one better or is one worse than the rest of them? So they probably change tiny things in these groups uh, just to uh, be able to compare this in a nice way, all right? Uh, and up until this point, we've only done we've only done one comparison, uh, one sample means. Um, but this is actually four different things, right? And ANOVA is the method that you guys will end up using um, more often than anything else. If you do any statistics, this is what you might do. If you read any research papers, you probably will see the results of an ANOVA test. Step two. Um, so they give this in the workbook, these conditions. So let's read through these. All observations must be independently selected. All right, that's not really any different than what we had before. We're going to assume, um, assume random selection. Wow, I have all of this on. Let's do this. Assume random selection. So that's going to take care of our first condition. Second condition, all groups must be approximately normally distributed with similar variances. Now, um, we did not do anything with this right now, but in your workbook, they actually give you, they give you some graphs to look at, and it's in problem one. So you can see here, these are the graphs. Yeah, they, they look like a Minecraft normally distributed. So you're going to say all samples um, roughly normally distributed distributed okay third population sizes must be at least 10 times the sample size well we don't know what trainees these are or what it's for uh, but let's assume okay let's assume that there are so in this case I'm going to say assume the population size uh, oops size is at least 10 times the sample size, right? Wow, my typing is off. Okay, <clears throat> that's step two. We did the conditions. Pretty straightforward. All right, step three. Um, now, this is where things get crazy if you follow the workbook. The workbook has some heavy duty calculations some crazy stuff and um i don't really think it's worth our time to go into it too at all you can certainly do them it might help your understanding of what's happening 
but it's not and it's not required you won't need it for an exam so those students that uh, usually the a plus students like to dig in a little deeper so um, if that's you then go for it you know and i can answer questions about it um but you know it's not necessary for the final to do all those calculations here's what is necessary um, so step three remember we're always getting the test statistic right so we're doing an ANOVA test and so what you would do um, we're gonna do something with all this data and it's really no different than we've done before we're gonna go to data data analysis and then you should in here find a NOVA single factor all right later on if we were doing 7-2 we would talk about these other two but we're not we're only doing this so a NOVA single factor click OK uh, the input range make sure you get the labels I keep saying it for everything just grab the labels every time check the label box uh, grouped by well they're grouped by columns right so we're gonna pick columns and then we'll have it go to a new sheet click OK and voila you've done the hard part all right now the things that you're looking for for this step three are right here or the thing so this green or if you're colorblind the thing under the F so that's 35.258 so let's copy that and then go over here to our step three and we'll say the F uh, stat and then we'll copy or oh, maybe I maybe I jacked that up already gotta go back here copy this paste special I just want the values I don't want the greenness all right and then in step three we usually also grab the p-value and oddly enough the p-value is right there boom so we copy that one back over here paste special just the values I don't want all the colors and remember that is oops uh, let's see that is equal to uh, 0 0.1234567891011121314 oh see it just changed it right back so if you're in Excel and you want to not have stuff like that happen, you can just do this, um, however many decimal places you want. Boom. Okay. So there's your p-value. Now we know from uh, previous experience that a p-value that low generally means what? All right. Yeah, I'm just going to answer. I'm not going to wait for you to ask me or to tell me. So uh, what that means is we're going to reject the null hypothesis right just like every test we've done and the null hypothesis if you remember is that all of the means for each of these types are equal so we're gonna reject that idea and we're gonna say at least two of them different okay that's it man that's the four-step process you did it you did it now uh, this is great it tells us that there is a difference but it doesn't tell us which group or groups are different from each other so what we need for that is this next thing all right um, go to this website here I have it listed you can pause it and grab it all right I'm gonna go to that website um, open this guy up Okay, so we have a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm just going to give you the steps you need to care about. You can certainly read through this all you want. We have four, right? There's four groups. Okay. Um, it looks like we're going to proceed to enter our data. And what you would do is grab each of those four things, right? That one. Let's go back to the website. In fact, let's do this so I can actually see it better. All right, doo -doo -doo. okay. So we grab this one and we paste them in there. Grab this one. 
It's calculate. All right. And it did a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of numbers, things that you could uh, look and check against. Uh, you'll see some of that same stuff there, right? That two point almost two e to the negative fourteen is there. Thirty five point two five eight. That's all there. So certainly this thing could even do the calculations you get here, right? Uh, that's two methods. That'll check to make sure you did it right with Excel. Or if you don't want to use Excel, you could use this website. Um, and then finally we come down here. This is the thing that I wanted you to see. Uh, these two key. I know I kept saying turkey the first time I read that. Um, and what it's showing us is uh, where the differences are. Right? If it says insignificant, that means that that those two are relatively similar. They're not you're not seeing a difference between them. That's what the insignificant means. But the ones here in green, where the p-value is less than 1%, that means there's a difference between A and C. This one's a difference between B and C. And this one's a difference between C and D. Right? So, what that tells us then, is that Charlie is the different one. Right? This, is, this is the odd duck. All right, that is it. I have shown you everything there is for module seven that I think you, oh, I lied. There's one more thing. So to know for the final exam, <clears throat> there are a few things. One, uh, know this four step process. Um, two, know how to find, know how to use this Tukey HSD test right? and why. And then three, uh, this one I didn't really talk about very much, but it's MSE versus MSG. And I need you to know this um, definition wise. Definition only. So you don't you don't need to memorize the calculation, just the definition only. So let me give that to you while we're here. MSE MSG. All right, so MSE it measures oh, measures the average variance within groups. I'll explain this here in a second. And uh, MSG measures the average variance between groups. Cool. So there's a variance in the different values, all right? And so that's essentially what MSE is referring to. It's a the the average variance in all the different individual values. Whereas MSG, so there's some number here and then a variance of those numbers, and how that's different from this variance and this group's variance and this group's variance okay so hopefully you can regurgitate that information when you see it on the final and that's it i'm done i did it we did it you did it and i did it and now 7-1 has been done so i'm gonna let you guys get on with your day and i will talk to you in the next video stay nerdy my friends Thank you